Hi everyone, J.R. Pepper here, and welcome to the second digital Odd Salon Shorts. Odd Salon, shock and art. For starters, art is not just one thing. It's not just painting. It's not just photography. It's not just theater. It's all of these things. Art is all these creative things that humans and sometimes various internet animals do that succeeds in compelling a reaction to its audience. Everyone might not like a Jackson Pollock. In fact, a lot of people will just think it's absolute shit. And that's okay, because sometimes you look at something else and say, wow, that's absolutely amazing. And you actually feel that. Then another piece, you might be angry and think, how the frig is that art? My kid could do that. And that's okay too, because art and what we think of art is different for everyone. But as long as it makes you feel something, that's what makes it art. And sometimes that feeling is something of shock. And for some people, that shock also means offended. And this has been going on for as long as humans have been drawing on walls. For example, it happened with the ancient Egyptians, specifically in the Armana period. Pablo Picasso loved pissing people off. In fact, it was like his second favorite thing in the world. And some pieces of art just piss people off or shock them by their mere existence. In fact, art is so synonymous with being shocking that there's even an entire art movement called shock art. It's a contemporary art movement that incorporates disturbing imagery, sound, or sense to create a shocking experience. This piece here by Marcel, Marcel Duchamp is considered to be one of the establishing pieces of the shock art movement in that it breaks with artistic trends and movements. And without that urinal, we wouldn't have such sensational... <laughs> you see what I did there? <laughs> I'm so hysterical when I'm tired. And amusingly enough, we wouldn't have that shark in a tank without that urinal. And nothing shocks politicians, especially New York politicians, like art. Yes, that's who you think it is. No, I don't want to explain it. I absolutely think it's better if I don't. But this New York City mayor, Fiorello LaGuardia, seen here with a dummy. And I'm just going to let that hang there. One thing that pissed off LaGuardia more than anything else during his reign of perpetual New York City terror would be this statue seen here, which is civic virtue triumphant over unrighteousness. The statue was made in 1909 and was put up in 1922. It was originally a marble fountain and it was commissioned by the previous mayor, McKellen with a bequest by Angelina Crane and cost $90,000. Think of how many DDR machines you could get with that. It's about 17 feet tall. And at the time when it was a fountain, it actually had dolphins involved. The dolphins have nothing to do with why it's offensive. So take that out of your brain. When the statue was originally installed in 1922, a lot of people were decidedly pissed off. 1922 being around the suffragist movement. Why was everybody offended by this sculpture by Frederick McMoneys? Well, see for yourself. The women in the statue were writhing, voluptuous sirens with these beautiful tails that were chained up and they almost look orgasmic in their defeat. Yeah, so they were hypersexualized and lascivious, and many women had a problem with the statue because it looked like the sashaying gentleman with the sword over one shoulder that was supposed to be civic virtue. Uh, seems as if he's stepping on these women, and it's largely misogynistic. In fact, in response to the criticism, the sculptor had this to say. What do I care if all these ignoramuses and quack politicians in New York together with all the damn fooled women get together to talk about my statue? Let them cackle. Let them babble. You can't change the eternal verities that way. He sounds charming. Sarcasm filled her up. Regardless of all the outrage about the statue, it remained in front of City Hall. That is, of course, until the mayor, a man, complained. But the problem wasn't the writhing women, but instead the male statue's voluptuous posterior. Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia was the mayor from 1934 to 1945, and he absolutely despised this statue. He called it Fat Boy. And he hated it so much that he had the statue relocated to Queens in 1941. But the reason wasn't because it was sexist or misogynistic or because the suffragists were really upset about it or because it was insulting to women. No, 
No, no, no. Instead, his reasoning was, I'm tired of looking at that ass every morning. He resented the fact that he was confronted with the figure's male naked buttocks every day that he left City Hall. So what did he do? He took the statue and he moved it over to Queens because that's apparently what we do here. The statue remained there until 2011 and was also a subject of hatred during the feminist movement in the 1960s and 1970s. Here you get a good view of where he resides now in Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn, New York. You see his contrapposta pose stepping on these orgasmic, lascivious siren women, in quotes, and his sashaying sword on his shoulder. He remains in Greenwood Cemetery, where he is an eyesore to the otherwise gorgeous landscape to this day. And with that, raise a glass for our invocation quote for the evening. Art is the process of evoking pity and terror, which is not abstract at all, but very human. The artist must seduce, render emotional his audience, or hers, or theirs, every time. Cheers, everyone. Here's to shock and art.